just a leopard frog. I'm going to try to catch it with my hands. This week on Kentucky Field. <laughs> you got it. We're in western Kentucky with our good friend Jim Doom, but we're not fishing. We're looking to fill a skillet with frog legs. Next, we'll head out into the field with biologists to see what they're doing to protect an endangered species. Then, most important fish of the day. That's number right. one. Number one. We'll head west yet again, and this time we are fishing. There he is. A nice there you go. Five pounder. It's all next on Kentucky Afield. Kentucky Afield. Every week, Kentucky Afield brings you features on hunting and fishing across the state. That's my pup. I'm proud of him. Here he comes right now. Let's get ready. Ready. Look at that, what a nice, nice fish. Hey, we dug wow. it up right there. We did. There he is. Ooh, a nice one too. Boy, he's healthy. What do we got? <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. Got the first help. Got one big smallmouth. Very nice. Double point, they're in there. There they go. Oh my gosh. Woo, look at that joker. Look at that. Beautiful. Whoa, this is a good one. That's better than good, Chad. Hello, and welcome to Kentucky Afield. I'm your host, Chad Miles. Join us as we journey the Commonwealth in search of outdoor adventure. It's not often that you hear of a young man asking for a frog gig for his birthday, but I have a friend who did just that. Now, let's head to Western Kentucky and put it to use. We're down here in Western Kentucky tonight in Trigg County, and I'm with my old buddy, Eli Doom. How you doing, buddy? Good. How good. are you? I'm doing good. I'll tell you what, I know you're excited, because yeah. uh, what are we going to be doing tonight? Frog gigging. Frog gigging. Man, I started frog gigging when I was about your age, mm -hmm. and it's still something that brings a huge smile to my face. I absolutely love to go frog gigging. Mm -hmm. Who else we bring here today? Granddad. Your granddad. <laughs> We got two ponds behind the house and he's chasing frogs, catching fish or something <laughs> all the time. You know, and the funny thing is, is I called you about a week ago and said, you know, it'd be fun. I said, has Eli ever been frog gigging? And you just kind of giggled. <laughs> and you said, Eli's birthday's coming up. And I was like, okay. I was like, we're gonna take him frog gigging for his birthday. I didn't understand how it fit, but you're eight years old now, right? As of last week? Uh-huh. All right, what did you ask for for your birthday? A frog gig. <laughs> A frog gig. I don't know too many people, eight-year-old boys, that say, you know what I need for my birthday? It's a frog gig. Now, I haven't heard any frogs yet, but it, we're getting close. It's getting yeah. dark. Did you bring a spotlight? Yep. Yep. Have you eaten frog legs before? Yep. What do you think? Delicious. <laughs> Ellie spends a lot of time with you guys in the boat. She's such a good dog, so we're going to let her tag along with us tonight. You got your boots on? Yep. You got a light somewhere, don't you? Yeah. You got your frog gig? Yep. I tell you what, let's go get loaded up and let's go sneak up to the first pond and start taking a look, what do you think? Yeah. All right, let's do it. Got a frog right here, looks like maybe even two. Oh, just went under, there's no one to your right. That thing was huge. All right, Eli's got a frog right here. We're gonna practice, but we're not gonna gig him. He's right here. Try to get that gig down there close. Right there. Right there. Okay, now let's find a bigger one, what do you think? Yeah, let's go get a big one. We saw a big one, didn't we? Yeah, got spooked. Got a little spooked, it's all right. That's a leopard frog. I'm gonna try to catch it with my hands. You got him. <laughs> the leopard frog. What do you think about that, buddy? First catch, kinda. <laughs> Ellie doesn't know what to think about that, does she? There he goes. Nice job, buddy. While sitting here searching for frogs, we come across something, we're like, what is that? We have to notice it uh, looks like a turtle. And if it is, it's a snapper. So Jim said he's going to get it. <laughs> Crazy man. Woo. 
<laughs> hey, you never know. You get yourself outdoors, you never know what you're gonna see. Sometimes you go out looking for frogs and you end up finding turtles. You ever handled a snapping turtle before? Yep. Oh, you have? Okay. Don't let him turn around there and get you. I tell you what, Jim, you raise them different down here. Like cotton mouth, that mouth wide open. <laughs> there he goes. He's like, I'm not gonna go to that part of the pond anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Get him, Eli. Oh man, you missed that one. That's all right. I ain't better next time. I believe you got that one, buddy. There you go. Hey, what do you think about that? You got him good. Mm -hmm. You got him pegged. Way to go. I think we're gonna get some more, what do you think? Yeah. Look at that one right there, Eli. That's a big one. Wanna go after that one or look around? Well, let's make our way over there and kind of hunt while we go. What do you think? Yeah. Oh, here's a big one. Okay, we got a big one. Oh, got I him. think you got him. You yes. did get him. Uh, that's a great job. That was a good shot, Eli. That'll be some good eating. Here's one. Good one. You missed him that time, but I bet he'll circle back around, come back up on the bank. Maybe you'll get another shot at him. We got bullfrog here. Then immediately on the right, we got another bullfrog, but they're just a little bit small. Looks like a big one there, Eli. Be easy. I believe you got him. Yes, sir. Frog on the end of the stick. You got him. That big old bullfrog there. You're getting pretty good at this. <laughs> Hold this light for me. Take a look at what you got. There you go. You know what? People ask me, city slickers that don't know any difference, they'll say, you eat frogs? Is it green? What color is their meat? White. Very white and very tasty, isn't it? Yeah. Here's one right here. He's under his limb. You want to shoot at him? Yeah, I'll shoot at him. Awesome. He'll be on the end of the arrow here in a second. I think I got him. I believe you smoked him. <laughs> That's a good one. Look at those meaty frog legs. You know, I actually still get excited shooting a frog. It doesn't matter what the game is. You know, if you have a passion for shooting archery, it doesn't matter what you target. It's just a lot of fun. It is. Well, Eli frog gigging's fun, isn't it, buddy? Yep. We'll have to do it again, what do you think? Yeah. Jim, I always have a blast coming down here in Western Kentucky and hanging out with you. Either we're fishing or hunting or doing a combination of both. The kind of tonight, a little bit of fishing and hunting. Sure. A lot of fun. Thank you so much for bringing Eli out Thank with us you. tonight. And we'll have to start planning our next adventure. What do you think? Yeah. All right, let's do it. Kentucky has numerous caves throughout the state. And many of those caves are very delicate ecosystems that house the Virginia big-eared bat. And the Department of Fish and Wildlife is working hard to protect and manage that species. Virginia big-eared bats are our most endangered mammal we have in Kentucky. As best we can tell from the information we have available to us, um, statewide there's only somewhere between three and 4,000 individuals currently. The biologists here at Kentucky Fish and Wildlife spent a lot of time managing Virginia big-eared bats. So last year as a part of our project with Virginia big-eared bats, we discovered a new, or at least newly known to us, maternity site for the species. It's a pretty sizable site. It holds maybe a little bit over 10% of all the Virginia bigger bats we know of in the state. We were concerned that people could unknowingly go into the cave at the wrong time of year and disturb the bats and actually cause the population to decline. So at that point, Kentucky Fish and Wildlife worked with the Daniel Boone National Forest, with U.S. Fish and Wildlife, with the Kentucky Natural Lands Trust, and with uh, experts in actually erecting these cave gates to get the site protected using, using a cave gate. Uh, I need a piece, a sill, S-I-L-L, 78 inches. Yes. When I say gated, we're erecting these barriers that will allow the bat to move in and out of the cave freely, but that restricts human access. 
human disturbance, and most of the time it's uh, unknowingly disturbing these bats, can actually have a negative impact on the population. So if we get a lot of human disturbance at a cave that's used as a hibernaculum, for example, while the bats are hibernating, the humans walking around will disturb them, they'll wake up, they'll start depleting fat reserves, and they'll actually starve to death in the wintertime. In the summertime, if it's a maternity site for a species, you disturb the mothers with their pups. Sometimes the pups, if you do it the wrong time of year, are unable to fly at this time, and they can actually fall down to the cave floor to their death. So when we put these cave uh, gates up or barriers up, it's there as a way of managing uh, a very small number of the caves that we have in the state, but that are the ones that are our most important cave resources. We utilized our Kentucky Wild program to pay for a portion of the gate. And in conjunction with that, the Imperiled Bat Conservation Fund, administered by the Kentucky Natural Lands Trust, paid for a portion of the project as well. So we were able to leverage Kentucky Wild funds that are donated monies from our Kentucky Wild members to actually get this site protected. What we want to do is put in these management strategies with uh, putting cave gates up, but then we also want to continue monitoring the sites to make sure that the populations are at least holding steady, although we would obviously prefer to have the, the populations increase in size. A tool that we use for monitoring populations we can go in with thermal binoculars and monitor emergence at night and just get a count of how many bats are coming out. In order to collect the most data from a site and to really see how population is doing, we'll use a harp trap. A harp trap is a metal frame with monofilament fishing line that you'd buy at any bait store strung vertically. And the idea is as the bats emerge out of the cave, they kind of bump into the fishing line that we've got pulled real tight and it makes them fall into a little cloth bag at the bottom of the trap. As soon as they hit the bag at the bottom, we have biologists on site that pull the bat out, and that's when we really start collecting some good information on, is this a site used by males or females, sometimes both? Is it a maternity site where we have both mothers and pups there? What's the reproductive condition and the body condition of the bats that we're catching? And that's where we're also able to uh, put bands on bats so we can do these long-term data sets. That's essentially a way of marking the bat so that we can collect trend data on individuals. If we're able to band these bats in the summertime. We'll go in in the wintertime to do the bat counts. And as we see bats that have a band on them, we'll pull that bat look at the band, report that, and we're able to find migration trends on species. So by attaching these bands, we're able to start getting these links between where they're spending their summers and where they're spending their winters. In addition, we're able to look year after year and see how long some of these bats live, which can actually be up to 20 years. So by not only doing the monitoring that we've talked about, but by also installing these cave gates at appropriate sites, we're able to monitor and hopefully recover the species long term. One of the things we want to make sure of is to protect the populations that we know of and then beyond that, once we get these sites protected, then we can work into some of the habitat work that needs to happen out on the landscape to make sure that the species is recovered. Are you interested in trying to catch a big catfish? Well, I recommend getting on a big river, find some moving water, and try this method called bumping. Today is a day that I have really been looking forward to. This is actually my second time out fishing with Captain Ben Gable, and last time we smoked them. Yep. <laughs> we absolutely crushed the fish. So we're, we're actually at the exact same location, and I've been keeping up with your Facebook post. You have been catching some really big fish this year. We've had a great year so far. Really couldn't ask for a better year. Our, our numbers have really been good this year. Well, I'll tell you what, we like to showcase some different things. Um, we're going to fish similar styles that we did last time. It's called bumping. That's right. And bumping, the best way you described it to me is if you're a bass fisherman, it's like reverse dragging a jig, right? That's, pr that's pretty much like if you guys, if people like to bass fish, I, I, I usually my first question when I get customers a boat, uh, do you like to do you like to bass fish? And they say, yeah. I say, well, you're going to like like the way we fish. It's just backwards when you're retrieving a jig or a worm or Texas rigging a worm back to you. Instead of that, it's it's reverse. You're walking it down the river. I fully expect that we're gonna catch some fish. 
and big quality fish. Yep. That's, I've been out with you one time, and that's that's what I've that was been my experience. <laughs> and I've watched your Facebook page, and it's like my God, he did it again. There's another 50 pounder. It's it's amazing yep. how you locate big fish. Well, let's. Uh, I say we uh, sun's coming up here. I say uh, we got a beautiful day. It's gonna be a hot day. It's gonna be uh, hot. Let's, let's, uh, let's hope the fish is as hot as what the day Sunscreen's is. Sunscreens on. Sunglasses are in the boat. I'm wearing some long sleeves. Try to keep the sun yeah, off. Yeah, we got me. we got fresh skip deck, So I say we go get after. Let's do it. <laughs> The way I like to hook these skip jack, there's a little yeah. lip right there. Just come up there, come right out the nose. All right. What type of flow you think we got today? We, Miles we're, prior. Uh, we're, we're, we're booking here pretty good. You mean go ahead and give her uh, let it yep, happen? Go ahead, just drop it straight down. All right. How deep are we fishing today? Uh, we're going to be in the 30 to 60. All right, now, I just felt the yeah. bottom. Yep, and then and then remember when you want to let it out, you just let it out as as you're coming up with your bump. Something just tapped mine. Yeah, I got one tapping mine too. Got a fish on? Uh, I think he came off. Ah, uh, he might still be. Asleep. Most important fish of the day. <laughs> That's Number right. one. Number one. You found him a little treat today, didn't he? Got him a little morning. Pop tart this morning. We found a trick and a tree. There he is. A nice there you go. Five pounder. I'll tell right you what. There. That's nice fish right there. That's that's what you want to take home and eat right there. That's a perfect eater fish right there. And they can range from five pounds on that big of a piece of bait to a hundred, huh? Yep. He just this one, this little guy is just getting going. So throwing back and get our bait on. There he is. Oh yeah, I see your rod tip going there. Yeah. There you go. A little better fish. There you go. I saw that rod tip bouncing. You got him over on this side, Chad. You got it loose? Yeah, I'm loose. Okay. Let me tell you, I'm out, I'm out there about to the boat ramp. <laughs> you need that? Nah, I don't think so. Let's see what you got here. See, this is a... You think about 15 pounds, you say? You yeah, he's you, you 10, probably it. 10, 12. You called it about right right? Out of 10. Yeah. That, and you know this fish, he, he's been fighting a little bit, just a little spot on him from, from spawning. You see his mouth a little bit, but pretty healthy fish. So. That is a good fish. Hey, you doubled from fish one to fish two. Yeah. We're, now we're it's time for we're, we're 20 standing, fish. Yeah, that's right. 20 we're, standing, we're steadily just getting up. So. And just a beautiful fish here. That sun on him like that. And then it just never gets old catching him. I don't even care if they're this size right here, just all the colors on him. Start hitting that bottom. It's just like knocking on the door. Ain't it? Yep. Using six ounces of lead, you think it would happen really quick and easy, but when you got flow <laughs> like we got, yeah, it, it's it, like you think you'd find it right away, but when you when you do feel it, there's no doubt. Okay, there you go. There we go. Good job. Uh oh, here we go. You got one too. Oh, now it's on. Ah, I don't think he's there. It's a small bite. We about made her a double. Yep, you. It was definitely small a bite. bite. This one might be more like a eight or eight or a nine pounder. Yeah, right there. There we go. And then poor fish didn't even get the bait. I'll tell you what, it's still such a huge bite. You think you want to come out here and everybody goes, oh, I want to catch a 50 pounder. You might change your mind when you get him hooked up. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, what is he? He's probably six. Uh, he's eight. Eight pounds? Yeah. You start looking at the length of that fish and you go, well, okay, that fish is probably, what do you think, 28 inches long or better? Uh, probably not quite that. Yeah, he's probably 24, probably 20, 24 yeah, 21. Inches long? I'll tell you what, now maybe I'm getting the hang of it. Maybe I'll yeah. get another one here real quick.
tell you what, being a rookie of this or only my second time doing it, it uh, it's amazing what the little extra weight you can really, really, really yeah. feel it. So in reality, you know, we like to get them baits back there, but you can still catch fish up here close to the boat. The main yeah. thing is to in order to catch fish, you have to feel it. Yeah. You, you got to be able to feel that bottom at all times. As you start getting better at it, then we like, when I run trips and stuff, then we lighten up your sinker as the day goes on. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. There he is. And guess what? I'm going to go back down there to the boat ramp again. <laughs> there he is. I see him way out there. Oh, yeah. Yep. What kind of fishing you got all kinds of time to get the net. Yeah. Lollygag around. Come back here, he's still 100 yards out. <laughs> Got him now. Woo. Gave you a workout, huh? It is. I mean, that is a really solid quality fish. Good and healthy. That's a that's a really nice fish, though. Yep. We're gonna get this dude back. Here we go. Yep. There you go. Keep that rod right there. See him right there on top of the water. Yeah. Oh yeah. He's eight, 18. That's nice. Got him? Got him. Nice. <laughs> That's why you did it. That's I why you get him what, in the boat. You did oh. a good job. Look at that fish. What do you notice about that fish? Look at his size. Yeah, I'll be dang. And an eyeball in there. Yeah. He at been, all. He been hooked probably before. Look, no eyeball. It's probably yeah, been. I, I have. I've only seen that one time. That fish no has been. That fish has been hooked. And the, or something, the eye's been removed, and it's literally healed over, and there is no eye. There's a skin. Just skin. But you know what? These fish, they work so much on sense Sand, of smell. Yeah. This fish is still very healthy and living its life. No eyeball. Yeah. Check that out. A one-eyed fish. One-eyed fish. You got a fish? Yeah. Is that a good one? I don't know. He's staying down. Oh yeah. Feel a little drag here. No, he's not wanting to be seen. He's gonna be a nice fish. There you go. Let's see here. Oh yeah. I got him. Nice fish. Upper, upper 20s. That's the one we're after right there. Yep, that's Good it. quality fish right there. Beautiful fish. Man, look how much when they once they get about the length of the last one, they just for a while start getting really thick. Look yeah. how wide and thick that fish is. All right, let's see what he weighs. Right at 28. 28 pounds. I mean, that's just a typical trophy blue cat right there. I mean, what a beautiful, beautiful fish. We're gonna we're gonna get him get him released here. Got him. Same old size today. 12, 13 pounder. That's the that's the slot today. Seems like. Just a beautiful, fun fish that will for most. For most people, unless you are an avid cat fisherman, that size fish, believe it or not, in this current, oh, yeah. will absolutely give you all the fights you want. Yeah, 12 pounds. And if you hook into a 40 or 50 yeah. pounder, you might be done for the day. <laughs> yeah. So, but wow, I'll tell you what, you, you, you've, you've never let me down. I've been down here <laughs> and done this with you twice, and every single time we come down here, we get plenty of bites. There's, uh, obviously, yeah, there's bigger fish. Obviously, we catch bigger fish, but some days it's just tough you know today we got a big south wind if you know what you're doing and you know from april all the way through october november you, you, a guy can can come out here and catch fish no doubt about it now let's check in and see who else has been out having fun in this week's ones that didn't get away here we have chuck hay and a massive crappie that he caught on Dell hollow lake this fish weighed nearly two pounds nice job here we have a nice largemouth bass that was caught by John Moore. 
This fish was caught at a Bullock County farm pond. Nice job. Six-year-old Wyatt Woods caught this beautiful five-pound largemouth bass at a private farm pond in Henry County. Congratulations. Here we have eight-year-old Polly Birch with a huge green sunfish. This fish was caught on a Zebco 33. She caught this while fishing at the Relatives Private Lake in Ohio County. Hey, mark your calendars. On Monday, July 31st at 8 o'clock Eastern Time will be our annual Kentucky Wild Question and Answer Show. We'll be streaming live on YouTube, Facebook, and at fw.ky.gov. And remember, hunting and fishing on private property is a privilege. Always ask permission and thank the landowner. Until next week, I'm your host, Chad Miles, and I hope to see you in the woods or on the water. <laughs>